Hello YouTubers out there, this is Jerry Sonovia at the Movies. So, today we're talking about a 1990 film called Graveyard Shift. It came out on October 22nd. Modest box office success. And the reason I bring that film up, which by the way is the worst adaptation of a Stephen King novel or short story I've seen thus far. And I've seen quite a few. But uh, I'm bringing it up because of this. I purchased this from Barnes & Noble. It's the uh, Stephen King movie and TV collection, which is pretty good. It's got uh, the TV movie for The Stand, The Langoliers, <clears throat> excuse me, Golden Ears, which I've never seen. And it's also got the films uh, Pet Cemetery, which I don't really care too much about, Dead Zone, which is one of the best ones, Silver Bullet, which is uh, a comical one, but entertaining, and of course Graveyard Shift, which I hadn't seen until last night. Um... So this is uh, overall a pretty good collection. I think I paid 13 14 bucks for it. So um, now Graveyard Shift is based on a short story, which is actually uh, amazingly much better than the movie, uh, from a collection of short stories called Night Shift by Stephen King. And um, the short story itself is only about 14 pages long, but... Let me tell you, it's actually more gripping than the movie itself. So, there are quite a few changes, and let's talk about them. So, Graveyard Shift is set in a, uh, a band, uh, or it's not a band, it's a textile mill, out in Maine, of course, and uh, as most of Stephen King's stories seem to take place in. And David Andrews plays this uh, drifter named Hall. David Andrews, probably best known for um, Terminator 3, although he's been in quite a few other films and uh, TV. Um, he's a drifter and he decides he wants a job at the textile mill. Now what's interesting is that the film opens with him getting a job interview from Warwick, who is the boss, and in the film played by Stephen Matched, who's appeared in also countless TV and film uh, roles. Um, and he, he, he goes through an interview and then there are the guys at the local cafe who also work at the textile mill who kind of make fun of him a little bit. You know, oh, it's a college boy and that sort of thing. And uh, David Andrews comes from, uh, or I'm sorry, the character of Hall, rather, comes from Berkeley. So uh, there is that. Um, but the, the, the short story actually opens with Hall already working at the textile mill. So I thought that was interesting. Um, now, here's the part that really uh, gets me. The the whole book is really about them working at the mill and then eventually going down to the mill to clean up the uh, basement. And it has a lot of antique furniture and this and that and the other. And the whole place is overrun by rats, which is another thing. So, of course, uh, in the film, there's Brad Dourif, who is always entertaining, no matter what bad movie he's in. And he has done some good ones, but... Here he plays an exterminator, which uh, the character is not in the book, uh, the exterminator. And he has hoses that uh, can shoot water through there and get rid of all the damn rats that end up in the river. There's a lot in, in the book, though, about how uh, a lot of these types of rats and other vermin have been in the area for quite some time, contaminating the entire area and the rats may be diseased, and so on and so forth. Um, so, anyway, Hall is trying to size himself up to Warwick, who turns out to be a, a very mean boss. He uh, literally beats the crap out of this woman that he's having an affair with, who is one of his secretaries, uh, something that's not in the book. And Hall stops him from really trying to, you know, punch her in the face and all this other stuff. Again, not in the book. Now, the most interesting uh, other uh, notable difference is the character of Jane Wisconski, played by Kelly Wolf. And you get the impression that there, she kind of uh, likes Hall, and you get the impression they, they talk a little and that she wants to, you know, maybe have something going with him. They seem to really respect each other. Um... But she is also being put in her place by uh, Warwick, who does that to just about everybody that works at the textile mill. However, in the film, her name is Jane Wisconski. But in the book, his name is Harry Wisconski, who is a fat, and as described in the book, a fat and lazy worker. 
So they changed the character of Wisconsky from the book into a female for the movie. Uh, I guess to have a romantic interest in the movie. However, because they don't really develop much of a romantic interest because they're deep down in this dirty, grimy, you know, textile mill, and they share one little kiss, that's it. <laughs> that's all you get. And also, spoiler alert, sorry, so this review is really for people who have seen the movie already and read the book. Um, Jane, the character, uh, is stabbed by Warwick. Again, this guy's a, you know, he's awful. He's basically evil. And, uh, but in the book, Harry Wisconski survives. And what's interesting is that there's another character who is not in the book, but uh, there are a few characters, obviously not in the uh, short story, but that are in the film. One of them is named Brogan, played by Vic Polizos. I think I'm saying it right. I, I believe it's an Italian name, uh, or maybe Greek. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, he appeared in uh, Harlem Nights and various other films at that time. He plays a character named Brogan, who uses the hoses uh, when they're trying to clean out the basement. And he is kind of fat and lazy. So technically, I would say his character was based on the original concept of Wisconsky from the book. I mean, it's this is a short story, again, only 14 pages long. Um, anyway, his character is not stabbed uh, and doesn't die. Um, or I should say, uh, Brogan actually dies. Let me change it around. Brogan dies. A lot of the characters die. They're attacked by the rats. They fall in there. So anyway, there's a huge, monstrous rat bat that lives deep in the bowels of this textile mill, which has several levels down. Uh, so, um, character of Brogan is killed by him. Now, what's interesting is that Warwick, uh, now in the movie, or in the movie, he seems to, you definitely get the impression that he knows this thing is deep in the bowels of the textile mill, and that he wants to almost get rid of all of his workers and, I don't know, keep the textile mill to himself. But he sort of sacrifices himself to the monster bat. It's really or rat bat, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, very strange, the whole thing, and uh, quite gruesome. Um, not to mention the death of uh, the exterminator, played by Brad Dourif, who is the most interesting character in the film. In fact, these characters uh, are just completely mean-spirited. Uh, there's, there's nothing to really take anything away from them. There's nothing to sympathize with. They're just mean. They're volatile. They're, I, I don't know. I mean, even... Even the main character of Hall, a drifter, is just, you, you kind of want to stay away from him. You don't want to get near any of these people. So there's nobody to sympathize with in this movie at all. Uh, not the least of which is Warwick, who, you know, certainly Stephen Matched uh, went out of his way to really uh, give this guy an evil sneer. Um, and an accent, I couldn't quite catch what accent that was, unless that is a main accent. Nobody else seems to talk the way that he does. Uh, certainly not with that accent. But um, in the film, he allows himself to be eaten, whereas in the book, uh, he seems to... Uh, Hall is using a hose against him, and then he trips and falls, and uh, I guess he gets eaten by some rats and just dies. It's a whole different thing. So, Graveyard Shift. Uh, I mean, this film, there's nobody to care about at all. Nobody to sympathize with, nobody to empathize with. And the most interesting character, Brad Dourif, uh, you know, has very few scenes. And then he even gets inside a... There's, there's basically like a, uh, an actual graveyard outside of the mill, or near it. I, I didn't understand that. That was... <laughs> anyway, he gets in there, inside of a mausoleum, and then the... The grave that's in there, or the tombstone, just, you know, bashes his head. I, I just said, what, what kind of a movie is this? Even for Stephen King, even for an adaptation, I mean, at least Cujo, which is one of the worst, or, uh, oh goodness, um, Maximum Overdrive, had some action to it. I don't know, it just, this felt, and those are some of the worst ones, uh, not to mention Children of the Corn. You know, there have been a lot of good ones, uh, but uh, and, and great ones. As I said earlier, Dead Zone is probably, to me, aside from the Shawshank Redemption, one of the more definitive uh, Stephen King adaptations. But this movie was just a, a disaster from the start. I mean, you could tell it's boring. 
It's ugly to look at, uh, except when they're outside the mill during the day. You see some sunlight, but basically, I mean, nothing in this film is, is anything other than just being utterly ugly to look at. There's just nothing there. It, these characters, I couldn't care less about them. They were disposable. This is a disposable movie. And I'm surprised that, uh, I mean, if Stephen King's name was not attached to it, and nobody knew it was based on a short story, this probably would never have been made. It would have been done as a low-budget effort, perhaps, uh, on the independent circuit. Um, so stay away from Graveyard Shift. But if you want to see how something is bastardized, check out, compare the book, or the short story, from Night Shift, which is worth reading. Um, I don't know if I would read it again. It's not one of my favorite stories by Stephen King, for sure. But, uh, and the idea of rats, you know, after a while, I just, I don't really care for films that deal with rats who, you know, might be <laughs> these disgusting little critters. They are disgusting. So there's that already on top of it. It seems to read better as a short story than to see it as a film. Um, just terrible. Avoid it at all costs, is what I would say. But if you're a Stephen King completist, and a fan, and uh, like some of the movie adaptations, or you've seen most of them, check it out. But let me tell you, it's just a, a bastardization of everything the little short story that is 14 pages long stood for. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so those are my thoughts on it. Uh, interesting how uh, things differ from book to film. Uh, that's always fascinating to me. And uh, this is Jerry Sadovia, the movie.